Yes, it's March 10th. It's a Friday. It's two days before the 95th Academy Awards. And yes, they don't mean anything. Yes, they are stupid. But we like to talk about it because it's just like the Super Bowl. You know, for football fans, it doesn't matter what teams are playing. They're going to watch it anyway because they love the game. I love the movies. I'm going to watch the Oscars, even if it's not the right movies nominated for stuff. So we're just going to go through my predictions, and of course, these could change, you know, minutes before the actual Oscars, so this is just what they are this second, but I'm feeling pretty, I don't, there's maybe one or two, maybe three, possibly four, (laughs) that I would change, but let's get to it, all right? We're going to start from the bottom of the wiki page for the categories. First one is, first one is best visual effects. I think it's a pretty given that it's going to be Avatar. One last time, everybody raves about how the way it looks. It's supposed to be groundbreaking technology, whatever. But the other nominees are all quiet, which is weird. All quiet in the West. It's weird that a World War II movie would be nominated for visual effects. And then there's the Batman, and then Black Panther, and Top Gun. I thought the thing with Top Gun was it was all like done for real, but I guess not. All right, best film editing. I went, see, this one's a toss-up for me. It's either Everything Everywhere or Top Gun, and I went with Everything Everywhere because I think they're going to, I think that movie's going to pick up a lot of awards, and oftentimes, Best Picture winners will be, will win the editing award. Not all the time, of course, but a good amount. And I can't believe Elvis was nominated. That editing was atrocious. Okay, and then best costume design, we got Babylon, Black Panther, Elvis, everything, everywhere, Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. Okay, so I think it's going to be Elvis. I think the costumes look pretty good, but the one I can see sneaking up is Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. But it's also Black Panther wins, because that one, the first Black Panther won this category last time it was nominated. And of course, Babylon's period piece about old Hollywood, so that could win too. But I'm going to go with Elvis. All right, best makeup and hair styling. I went with Elvis again, but I definitely think the Batman deserves it. They really made Colin Colin Farrell disappear, which is pretty cool. And the whale, like, the whale's, like, I'm sure the fat on the face is real, but, like, the belly looks like CGI or something. I don't know if that's true or it's photo, like, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, I think Elvis is going to win this, Tom Hanks they made look fat and then it's the 70s so everybody looks 70s-esque and whatever I, I think it's whatever but you know I think let me look I think the first Black Panther won this award too but I could totally be wrong I think it won costume and production design I don't think it won makeup but let me look let me let me let me look jeez the Black Panther Wikipedia page is like 6,000 pages long. Um, One best costume, one best music, one best production design. It wasn't being nominated for makeup. Okay. All right, so I don't think that'll win. Yeah, it's going to be Elvis. Maybe the whale. Hope it should be. It deserves to be Batman. And I'll quite on the front. How hard is it to just throw dirt on people's faces? Whatever. Okay, best cinematography. We got All Quiet, Bardo, Elvis, Empire of Light, Tar. Okay. I've just been seeing a lot of articles being posted about how great they think the Elvis cinematography is, and I think they just want a woman to win, too, so she'd be the first woman to win, possibly. Um, if it's n- That's what I put. I put Elvis. If it's not Elvis, it's probably All Quiet or Empire of Light. You can't go wrong with Roger Deakins. Okay, and then Best Production Design, I put... Babylon, but I can totally see Elvis win in this, maybe even Avatar, I think the first Avatar won this category, which doesn't make sense, because it's all CGI, so you, in CGI you can make anything, so I don't know what the big deal is, okay, best sound, usually uh, it's, a good, it's a good guess that war movies won this, so it's possible all quiet will, but I think it's probably going to be Top Gun, but also often musicals will get this, so like Elvis might get it, but definitely Batman won. I don't think Avatar will. So it's between those three, but I put Top Gun. You know. 
All right, best original song, the most pointless category of all time. I don't know why they do it. Um, I heard all these songs, and all but four of them are really slow, so I just picked the most upbeat one. It's the Natu Natu from Triple R, and it's also diversity points, so they want to give it to the Indians. So if it's not that one, it's probably Black Panther, because it's apparently a big deal. Rihanna has a new song for the first time in whatever years. I don't even think it's been that long, but in pop years, pretty long. Okay, best original score, I put Babylon. And I know a lot of people have criticized the music for just being like La La Land and stuff, but it's like La La Land on cocaine. And I just don't think the other musics are all that great. I mean, it's John Williams did The Fablemans, but I don't even remember there being music. And Everything Everywhere is whatever, you know. Banshees, I thought it was pretty good, but it was kind of like the same two or three songs, it seemed like. And All Quiet just didn't fit a World War II movie. And I, that was the point, the director said, but... Whatever. So I think Babylon is going to win. If it's not Babylon, it's probably going to be Fablemans or Banshees, I think. Best animated short. So usually I try to go see these in the theaters because some art house theaters and I guess AMCs now play all these shorts, fake shorts, animated shorts, live action shorts. And this is the animated short. I didn't see any of them. I haven't seen any of the shorts. So I just kind of just read the synopsis and see what sounded like it would win. I didn't see there was any Disney or Pixar shorts, so that made it harder. But I went with the Flying Sailor because it looks like they won a lot of awards. So, all right, in best live action, I went with Le Pupil because it's Alfonso Cuarón is credited somewhere in there, produced it or something. So he's won a lot of Oscars. So I just put that one. And then best fake movie, I mean documentary short. Um, I put How Do You Measure a Year. It's the one with like. The guy just documented his daughter growing up for X amount of years. I don't remember how long. So it seems like it kind of tug at the heartstrings. If it's not that one, I think it's probably going to be... Um, I don't know. Who cares? All right. And then best fake movie. I mean, documentary feature. I put all the... I haven't, I've only seen Fire of Love, which that does... Even though I haven't seen the other ones, that one deserves a win. That one's just amazing. But I think it's gonna be all the bloody, all the beauty and the bloodshed because I saw that everywhere. So, and it's about activism or something, a woman activist. So, Oscars love that stuff. All right, best international feature film. I went with All Quiet just because it's nominated in so many other categories. But for some reason, like that would make sense, right? But sometimes the, the Oscars do things that don't make sense. So if it's not All Quiet, it could be close. That one at Cannes, I'm pretty sure. But I know Argentina 1985 has been picking up awards too. But I just went with All Quiet because it was nominated for so many things. But it's probably not going to be that. Um, it's probably going to be Argentina or close. But I'm hopeful. All right, animated feature. We got, I mean, obviously this has to be Pinocchio. Could be Turning Red, but that was kind of too far long ago. There's a recency bias kind of thing. And I can't believe nobody's boy like getting pissed off about Marcel the Shell being nominated. It's two characters stop motioned in live action environment. They, you know, they didn't think Apollo 10 and a half, ten, frick. they didn't think t Apollo 10 and a half counted as animation. And then Richard Linklater and a bunch of other people protested and then they made it short listed and then they didn't nominate it. But Marcel the Shell counts, even though it's one, two characters stop motioned. All right, well, it's a no-brainer. I think it's Pinocchio. Real stop motion. Okay, best adapted screenplay. I went with Women Talking because um, they're not going to give it to Glass Onion. They're not going to give it to Top Gun. So that narrows it down to Living or All Quiet. It's possible All Quiet wins this, but I think, you know, they don't want to be accused of sexism, so they're going to make uh, Women Talking win. And it's pretty dialogue-heavy. I didn't actually see this one. I wanted to. And uh, dialogue-heavy stuff is... I like dialogue-heavy stuff and... Whatever. All right, original screenplay. Now, this is a doozy. What usually happens is the best picture winner wins one of the screenplays, whichever one it is, original or adapted. Four times in the last 12 or 13 years, the best picture didn't get it a screenplay award. So this one's tricky for me because it's definitely between Banshees or Everything Everywhere. It all depends on really what's going to win Best Picture. Is Banshee's going to win Best Picture? 
then put Banshees for original. If everything everywhere is going to win, you know, same thing. But I'm, I'm dividing it. I'm splitting it. You'd be safer just to pick one of the movies for both categories and hope that, you know, one of them is right. That's This is one of the things I said I was going to possibly change leading up to the awards. But I uh, kept screenplay with everything everywhere. But it's probably going to be Banshees, if not that. Uh, Fablemans is probably the spoiler upset. Anyway, Best Supporting Actress, I put... Angela Bassett, Bassett. I don't know how she says her name. She's been nominated before. This is kind of like a a legacy award they might give her just for her body of work rather than her actual performance. She's barely in it. But I think Hong Chow really deserves this. And then just last night I was looking at Carrie Condon and Banshees. She has been. She has won Best Supporting Actress in so many awards. So it's possible she actually wins. And that one I might change too. From I have Angela Bassett, but I might change it to Carrie Condon. All right, Best Supporting Actor. It's a lock that it's going to be Ki Hui Kwan for Everything Everywhere. Guaranteed. There's That's not going to... Not, nobody's ever going to... And I just want to say Judd Hirsch being nominated from The Fablemans is complete, utter nonsense. He's in one scene. One and a half scenes. Because there's the one where he you know talks with the main character in his bedroom for like five minutes. And then there's a scene where he leaves. And that's it. Crazy that that's nominated. And Paul Dano should have been nominated instead. Because he's in the whole freaking movie. And he's good. And all right, Best Actress. I put Michelle Yeoh in Everything Everywhere. I think that's pretty much a lock. I'd be like 95%. If not, it's going to be Kate Blanchett. But I put Michelle Yeoh. It seems pretty solid. Best Actor. I don't know why people think Austin Butler did great. And is worthy of being Oscar nominated. His... Stage presence and lip syncing skills are amazing, but when it's like off the stage stuff, the real stuff, he's just dead. There's nothing going on his eyes. There's nothing going on. You don't see any folds or wrinkles happening. There's no emotiveness, emotion going on. He's just he's just a model, you know. He's just he just looks like he should be a model, not an actor. All right, but I think Brendan Fraser is going to win this. If not, it's going to be Austin Butler or Colin Farrell. If Colin Farrell wins, I'll be happy. He was freaking amazing. But so was Brandon Fraser. So either of those two, I'm, I'm okay. But I put Fraser. All right, best director, I think it's hands down going to be the Daniels. Which also complicates things because it's possible that they'll give them director and not the best picture and maybe not the screenplay award either. But maybe I think they'll just do, they'll give them the best director and the best screenplay i don't think they're gonna get best picture i don't know i don't know this is it's just such a chaotic close race between so many things it's a it's an exciting it's kind of an exciting year when, in terms of oscar stuff all right but i yeah i went with the daniels i think that's pretty much locked now the best picture is where it, in the screenplay is where it's complicated i put banshees but it's probably gonna be everything but i just there's something about i don't think that would that would like fit the oscar brand i mean there's like dildo jokes and stuff so i don't know and it's like an action movie i don't think an action movie has won best picture since gladiator or something or lord of the rings but what do i know i think it's gonna be banshees and i might change that script to banshees just so i have two and and just maybe hope get one right i don't know i'll I'll just leave it my mother says my mother was a teacher a temp, really. I'm just kidding. But she's always said they uh, teach you, like, or they teach or something that you always stick with your gut. Go with your first answer. So maybe I just won't change anything. In honor of my mother. I hate you, Mom. Why are there so many movies?